The university lecturers from one of Nigeria's leading universities, the University of Lagos and that of Ghana, have been exposed in the sex for great scandals as revealed by BBC Africa Eye Team. The 52 minutes long documentary exposed the atrocities committed by lecturers and how female students, those struggling with studies, seeking admission or in search of mentors, are being exploited and harassed sexually. Dr. Boniface Igbenegu from University of Lagos and Paul Butako from University of Ghana were culprits as revealed in the documentary. Dr. Boniface Ibenegu, a senior lecturer in the Faculty of Arts of the University of Lagos and a head pastor of Foursquare Gospel Church, were caught trying to sexually harass the undercover reporter who posed as a 70-year-old girl seeking admission into the university. Meanwhile, the lecturer caught on tape in the BBC investigative documentary exposing the sex for Marx uh, scandal at the University of Lagos. Boniface Ibenegu has been suspended indefinitely by the authorities of the institution. The Vice Chancellor of the institution, Uluwato in Ugundipe, reportedly confirmed the development. Ugundipe said the lecturer has been suspended indefinitely and that a panel will be set up to investigate the issue. The investigation is part of a broader one that uncovers the sex for great crisis in universities in Nigeria and Ghana. The lecturer, who was the sub-dean of the Faculty of Arts, was caught on camera trying to cajole the undercover 17-year-old student seeking admission at the institution. And the Four Square Gospel Church has asked Dr. Boniface Igbenegu, a senior lecturer at the University of Lagos, Akoka, to step down from all ministerial assignments. In a statement on Monday by the National Secretary of the Church, Ike Chuku Ubaja, the church dissociated itself from Igbenegu, saying appropriate measures will be taken against him. The associate professor had been filmed making amorous advances at a prospective student of the University of Lagos. The student, who was actually an undercover reporter, had introduced herself to Igbenegu as an admission seeker. The senior lecturer had shut the door against her and demanded a kiss as he drew, closer to him, drew her closer to himself. The video had attracted criticisms from Nigerians who demanded that the lecturer be punished. And now with me in the studio, to have this conversation about this new development is uh, Tubosun Akeju. Uh, Akeju? Yes. Yes, uh, reputation manager. Good morning. And now you're a reputation manager. First question will be what's your reaction to this development, this story that broke yesterday? Very, very dis uh, despicable. Um, you, it's not new, but I'm very happy that um, something drastic has happened that. Mm will be a defining moment in this situation that have existed as long as I know in Nigerian universities especially. Sad. Very sad. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, you know, what do you think in your own, uh, well, secondly, first of all, let's go to the fact that he's been suspended indefinitely by the institution and of course by the church where he is a lead pastor. Yeah. Do you think that is enough? No, it's not enough. Why so? Uh, because it's still going to happen. I think certain measures have to put in place you know, to stop this menace, to curb it, you know. Um, and I, I, I'll list just a few. Mm -hmm. There has to be almost like a whistleblowing uh, policy that has to be in place. That if people mix, if a lecturer or someone in a place of power authority makes certain advances at you, this is how you can discreetly, you know, report this issue. Because one of the problem is, you'd see on social media yesterday, a lot of people started to come and say, oh, this person made these advances at mm. me. Some people in that, that were their friends were surprised to say, oh, that really? man could make such advances at you. And I think that there has to be what I call, or what is generally known as witness protection, sort mm. of, you know, because one of the reasons people don't come out to, you know, uh, make this allegation is number one, the, the shaming that comes with it, um, a lot stigma. of the time, the stigma. You sometimes you can um, 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 categorically uh, or have empirical evidence to prove that those things happen, and then it becomes a very very tricky thing. And I also think that lecturers have to be educated. Hmm. Um, I think that a lot of the time, people, uh, human beings are emotional beings, and. Um, you know, some people don't know when they are crossing the red line. And I, I don't think this is an African problem. I just think people don't know. Uh, I was reading the book of the founder of Nike, and he actually dated someone in his class, but he made a decision that he was going to resign from the school. The mm. moment he made the decision to date the person, he started to think about the fact that as a lecturer, I can't date someone in my class. I would have to, you know, uh, resign. But I think life happened and then work took him out of that role. But 
people need to understand that if you are actually going to date someone or you're going to have a relationship with someone even if it is genuine Mm -hmm. There are things you have to do. For example, in companies today, uh, and companies that you know have very high standards in in procurement uh, or procurement rules, there are certain gifts that you cannot accept. There are certain gifts that, if they are presented to you, the procedure is that you must declare that a vendor, maybe being a friend or not, has given this thing, um, has given this gift. Um, there are rules that you cannot accept gifts that are more than a particular value. You know. Constantly, both vendors and staff of some of these companies are constantly educated about these policies, about these rules and regulations, so that there won't be an excuse, oh, I didn't know. And the benefit of that is when you educate both the vendors and the staff, the vendors will know not to make appropriate, inappropriate, inappropriate. Uh, um, um, and advances. And the, the staff will also know that they are not supposed to create any atmosphere where some of those things happen, so that when they happen, it will be you know, equivocally clear that you know that you've crossed the line um, I also think that you know uh, people we have to see this particular episode mm -hmm. to a logical conclusion to set the precedent and deter people I mean one of the um, journalists did say that she dropped out of school that's mm -hmm. someone's life that you could have ruined that's someone that could have become a problem to the society if you know if, if, if things went very, very bad, you know, we have to find a way to ensure that it doesn't stop by suspending indefinitely just a few because mm -hmm. there are loads of them. You would have thought that the, the case of the lecturer in OAU will have served Be a, as a major deterrent. The man was sentenced to, I think, six years in prison mm. or thereabout, you know. But see, we still continue to have, you know, um, this situation. So um, I think that you know, we have to see this to a logical conclusion, have, you know, uh, um, a system in place that allows people to come out and say it, and then um, people are more encouraged, you know, to do this. Then lecturers are educated to know mm. when they are crossing the line. The second man on the documentary was almost, I mean, we, uh, it might seem like a trick, as possible as a trick, was asking for a relationship. Mm. Sounded a bit genuine, but he had crossed the line, mm -hmm. you know, because you are in a place of power. You know, that person is, you, you are in a place of authority, and that person does not have that sense of objective mind mm -hmm. to be able to make the decision. So you're almost forcing the person, yeah. you know. So um, uh, it's so, very sad, uh, uh, you know, to, to see that this this thing is really, really happening. Uh, uh, happening. And I'm, I'm also glad that it has come out like this because it has been there even before I ever got into the university. Mm, world, quite so unfortunate. Uh, unfortunate. Uh, clearly, there are issues of integrity like you've raised there. So we hope to see the end of this. And still on the matter, uh, former Senate President Bukola Saraki has reacted to an investigation by BBC Africa where two lecturers from Nigeria and Ghana were exposed for sex for grades. A senior lecturer at the University of Lagos Faculty of Arts, who is also the head pastor of a Foursquare Gospel Church in Lagos, Dr. Boniface Igbenegu, was one of those exposed in investigation. Saraki, in his reaction, revealed that he was very appalled by the discovery while urging the President, Muhammadu Buhari, and Senate President, Ahmad Lawan, to revisit the sexual harassment in tertiary education institution passed by the 8th Senate. As a father, I am appalled by the actions of lecturers captured in the sex for grade expose. We cannot allow this sort of deplorable behavior to fester. In 2016, my colleagues and I in the 8th Senate passed the sexual harassment in tertiary education institution prohibition bill to prescribe a five-year jail term for any lecturer, educationist, or person in position of authority in any tertiary institution in Nigeria found guilty of such conduct. I appeal to the 9th Senate and President Muhammad Buhari to revisit this bill so that we can implement the institutional reforms necessary to safeguard our children in educational institutions in the country. I also urge the institutions to conduct robust investigations, not only on the accused, but also for all other reports and complaints that come in. We need to believe victims and make institutions safer for our students, he tweeted.